Hello, and welcome to a new series of guides that I'm making. This one is going to be about the Reactor PLC, but the series overall is going to cover how to set up the entire Computercraft Mechanism SCADA system basically from scratch. I already have the Mechanism machines built, but I haven't put any computers or modems or cables or any other thing like that in yet. So I'm going to walk through how to do that in addition to covering how to use the configurator for each device in each video. So as I said, this one's going to be about the Reactor PLC. So to get started with that, I'm going to need a Reactor Logic Adapter. So right here is the Reactor Logic Adapter. Make sure you don't use a port. You need to use the Logic Adapter to connect computers to reactors. So there's two ways of doing that. There's the simple way, where you just put the computer on the Logic Adapter. And then there's the other way, if you don't have things right next to each other. So put that there. You want a wired modem and some networking cable. Do something like that and connect it. And make sure to right click the modem that's touching the reactor. Otherwise, it's not gonna be able to see it. You can double check, do peripherals, you see Fission Reactor Logic Adapter 2. So I don't wanna do that this way. So I'm gonna break this, put the reactor PLC right on the reactor. So the next thing to do here is to use the installer from GitHub, which I'm going to grab with Pastebin like this. And then using that installer, I can install the Reactor PLC application and confirm with Y. Okay, now that that's downloaded, there's two ways to get started with the configuration. Since this has no configuration, just straight up launching the program with startup will bring it up. But now and at any point in the future, you can use configure to bring up the configuration. So in this case, I'm just going to use startup so that it'll launch right afterwards. So right here, it's telling me that I don't have a valid config. That's because I haven't set anything up yet. So that's expected. If there was an update and you're getting this message, you will see the view configuration clickable if you already have a config. But this will be saying that it's not valid. So if there's a change to configurations, you can look here. There's some previous changes and you can go through again. It's going to autofill all the settings you had before. Same with your RTUs and other devices. So you don't have to worry about losing settings, but just be aware of that. So in this case, I want to configure the system. So there's two different big ways to configure your PLC, networked and not networked. If it's networked, it'll connect to a supervisor and you'll be able to manage stuff, do auto control, do a lot of nice fancy stuff. But if you don't have a system set up yet and you just want safety, you can set this as a not networked PLC, in which case it's still going to run local safety checks on the reactor PLC, but it won't have all the powers and advanced features that you would have if you networked it. So in this case, I'm going to start off with it not networked, just as an example, since I don't have a supervisor yet. And unit ID is just the reactor ID. So this is number one, because I only have one so far. Hit next. And then you can do emergency cooling control. Normally you'd use your supervisor for this and connect it over an RTU. But since this is not networked, I'm going to definitely want to set this up myself. So I'm going to click this to enable that. And then it's going to give these options on how to configure the redstone. I want to do redstone on the top. I'm going to use bundled redstone from immersive engineering. And let's just use just any colors. I'll just keep it as red for now. And then your logging configuration. This stuff you're generally going to keep as is. If you want to put your log on a disk, you could do like disk or something. If you want to turn on debug messages, you can. As it says, it's going to make much larger log files, but that's helpful for me if you need to report bugs or if you just want to see what's going on. Then here, there's some color configuration options. You can do the light theme sandstone or the dark theme basalt. So there's color accessibility settings. If you're colorblind, here's the options for those. And if you want some more contrast or you like the color blue, you can replace the greens with blues. Um, you can turn the offs to just black instead of tinted on the front panels. And you could also have both those options. In this case, I'm just going to leave it default. Looks all good. You can see a summary of settings here. Apply this. And then exit. Now I can see Reactor PLC. I did the dark theme here. So here's a summary of your devices and network your general status. If this is red, you're going to see the reactor light or the modem light off. Since this is not networked, the modem light isn't necessary, so it's still going to be green. But if it's networked and you don't have the modem, then this is going to be red. Status is going to be red. Here's just the status of the coroutines that run. You don't really need to know much about that. Little reactor active. The emergency coolant will show up if you have configured it, which I did. 
And then you see the RPS trip, which is the reactor protection system. And here's all the different things here. So this gray section is going to cover the reactor protection system. So if a safety trip occurs, it'll light up over here what happened. Like you might have had low cooled coolant, high heated coolant, high levels of damage, a high temperature, stuff like that. Reactor fault here is if your reactor is not formed. So we can demonstrate that by making it not formed. And PLC fault is if there was an error trying to talk with the device, which would also happen if it wasn't formed, but could happen on its own, in which case restarting the PLC should fix it. And I'd love a bug report if you can do that. And timeout here, you'll only ever see lit up and networked if your supervisor connection is lost. Automatic is if the supervisor scrams the device and manual is if you do it yourself. Resetting this, you'll see that this will fault again. Since it's no longer trying to access things, PLC fault won't light back up until it's formed and okay. Do that, it'll reset, it's all good. So to configure the emergency coolant, I'm gonna use redstone wire connector, interface connector, and wire coil from immersive engineering and the screwdriver you'll need to configure things. So to start, I'm gonna put a redstone interface connector on the computer. It must be an interface connector if you're using bundled redstone. Then I'm gonna use this just to carry the wire. And then over here, I'm going to set up the ones that are actually going to control these pipes. So next I'm going to connect the wire to the interface connector up here, and then I'm going to connect this to all the other ones. And it, importantly, I'm going to turn on redstone sensitivity on each of these pipes. And then you got to set the settings. So this one needs to be output, and I picked red. You can see that that's working now because we don't need emergency coolant, so it's closing it. There you go, that's the emergency coolant. If the reactor runs out of coolant, it's gonna open those and it'll pour water into my boiler, which will then cool my reactor. So this is because the sodium's still gonna be in the cooling loop. It's probably just backed up either as heated coolant in your reactor or heated coolant in your boiler. So this will provide water to your boiler so it can cool that sodium. So if you have a water-cooled reactor, you'd be connecting the emergency coolant directly into the reactor. So now I'm gonna switch this to a networked PLC, which is what most of you are gonna be doing. Configure system, select networked, move on, same stuff. I'm gonna leave this here for now since I don't have my RTU set up. And now here are the network options. So for each device that's networked, you're gonna see something like SVR channel, PLC channel. These need to be the same for every single device in your whole SCADA network. If they're not, things are not gonna work. So the supervisor channel is default this PLC channel here. So for any of these inputs, you can double click, you can click around, you can arrow keys, you can control A to select, you can control V to paste. So this should be pretty straightforward to use. So on multiplayer servers, don't use the default channels unless you know for sure no one else is using the system. Because if you use the default channels and they use the default channels, your devices might connect to each other's supervisors and it'll be a big headache to debug. You got a connection timeout if you have a really laggy system. Maybe you wanna up this a little bit, but just note if it's really laggy, a lot of things might just end up not working well. And trusted range here is a little layer of security. This computer will only talk to other computers within this range and vice versa for each other device's trusted range. So make sure if you're going to use this, that things are close enough because otherwise it'll just not connect with seemingly no reason. Zero as the default prevents this feature from running at all. It is not for zero range. Then here is the facility authentication key. If you use this on any device in your network, it must be the same and used on all the devices in your network because they will not talk to each other otherwise. So adding this, make sure that your computers will only accept valid authentic messages from other computers in the network. Same log stuff. You could switch the themes just for some variety. Move on. You can see that the authentication key is censored here. I can show it. Can apply this. Now if I start up, you can see status is red because I don't have a wireless or ender modem. I highly recommend using ender modems if you have the ender pearls to spare because they have infinite range and that avoids any headaches caused by wireless modems being a little too far from other ones. So now I can see status green, modems green, and then there's the timeout because I couldn't talk to a supervisor because I haven't set it up yet. So over here, I set up my second reactor PLC at my second reactor. And in this case, because it's the second reactor, I'm gonna do unit number two. That's basically the only difference here. It's just very important to do that. 
So I'm gonna apply this, and then I can start up. And since I didn't set a facility authentication key on that one, I'm gonna go back and clear it on this one, because I'm not gonna use it on this server. I hope that was helpful, and I will be making more videos after this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments on GitHub discussions, or join the Discord. You can find the link to that on the GitHub. Thanks for watching.